Let's get started. You may learn something. I'm really pissed off. <laughs> wow. Don't cross me. Good. All right. You have been warned. My name is Jason Jules. I'm a London-based writer and, I guess, social commentator. And I also make accessories. And um, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of it. You know, my first, my first love really is words. I just love words. The thing is, I'm a freelancer, so I like working in this environment where you're working with like-minded people and they're creative and they like to see things happen. So my goal, my ideal for each day is to see something that's been produced, to produce something. And that way, if you work with people who are on the same mindset, then you can make things happen. It's not, it's not really hard. If it isn't, it isn't, especially these days when you have everything at your fingertips and you pretty much you can, you know, for a small amount of money, you can pretty much have a film channel or a radio station or a clothing line. It's, you know, the really expensive thing is having the ideas. Culture's like yoga in a certain degree, to a certain degree, but also it's, you know, it's fish and chips and football and it's, you know, dull cues and underage pregnancy, that's culture. So what do we mean by culture? Or is it, you know, the way somebody is influenced by, you know, Tarantino or a Spike Leafer? What, what's, what is culture? I don't know anything about culture. I suppose it does make sense. The weird thing is, of course, that, you know, when, when youth culture was young, that the term youth culture made sense. You know, when it when people start realizing that there's a teenager that had a certain buying power, then a youth culture was created or manufactured. But as people have extended in terms of their their kind of I don't know, their indulgence and their their playfulness, you know, you're no longer before it was a notion of, you know, you got married at 25 and then you were an adult. You didn't have a youth culture anymore. You did grown up things. Or you got married at 30 and you became a, a, an adult and you got a proper job and you wore suits. And now that the, the elements of youth culture have extended into the 30s and 40s and 50s. So is it youth culture anymore or is it something else? I think that's the myth that we like to have. I think that's the lie that we we participate or we have a certain level of control or influence over what becomes popular and what doesn't. But I'm not sure if that's really the case. I think it's almost as if we have choices, but the choices are limited to what's on offer. You choose this red, but you can choose this red. But ultimately you have to choose red. Do you know what I mean? R&B video with a naked woman, or you can choose an R&B video with three naked women. But ultimately, you've got to choose an R&B video with... That's the way it seems to work. You can't choose an R&B video that's showing some kind of radical idea, something that's socially conscious and really powerful and going to change the way people think about themselves. That's not necessarily going to get the, the button pressed on it and the support from the mainstream and the controversy in the newspapers and the bloggers talking about it because it may be a bit too complicated. It won't fit into the current remit. So, yeah, I think we have choices, but the choices are limited. But what makes you think I'm calm? <laughs> I suppose I should take it as a compliment, right? I think it's a good All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really, I'm like as angry as the next man. <laughs> I think my dad said once, if, um, I think I was doing my, my exams or whatever it is. Said, well, no, I don't know. I was doing some work, whatever it is. He said, how's life, Jason? I said, it's really stressful. And my dad's a man of very, very, very few words. And he, he just basically said, um, give the stress back. Because if someone's stressing, you just give it back. Don't take on their stress. It means own your own stress. And if you're being stressed by other people or a situation, then really don't take it on. I think that's what he meant. <laughs> I've got the rest of my life to figure it out. It's funny because the people who 
almost seem to be, in my mind, seem to be cool. And the closer you get to them, the more complex they are. But for me, somebody who seems cool is somebody that I would like to aspire to be like. And then the closer you look at them, the less cool, the less calm, and less kind of complete their lives really are, the more complex their lives are. Beneath the surface is quite a lot of tension and rage. And so, is it really that cool? I don't know. I suppose the thing that interests me is being interested and trying to create something. So I always want to be able to, I don't know, almost like hit the pillow having known that I've managed to produce something or in the process of producing something. Um, I guess, you know, like Ken Kesey said, uh, you, know, you almost like have current fantasies. Do you know what I mean? Like, and those are the things that keep you going, the desire to, to do something new or to create something that you necessarily haven't done before. Or to work with people who are, who are discovering new stuff themselves. So for me, it is about working with people who are you know, excited about what they do and therefore I become excited or to create something for myself that, that I find interesting. I think that's pretty much what gets me out of bed and hopefully makes me realise that I've had a good day if I can manage to, to achieve something. All my life I came across people who say they want to get into this thing, I want to get into the music industry, I want to get into the design industry, I want to get into something and then I want to get into the fashion industry and they keep on spending, their, they spend their lives trying to get into this thing that they're already in. It's almost like I want to get into, into writing. Well, how do you get into writing? You just, if, you're, if you write, then you're already in it. So it's, it's almost like it's never that, it's never this thing that's removed from you. If you are a writer, then, that's, then you're in the writing industry. If you are a creative, then you're in the creative industry. But if you detach yourself from it, then you will never be it. And you will never get into the thing that you already are. I know it sounds like a, it's almost like a, what would you call it? Like double think, but it's actually single think. It's just, you are what you do, therefore just do it. If you want to be an athlete, you don't, do you know what I mean? You, you run, you know? No, the thing is, I think if you're doing what you enjoy doing, then, what more do you want? Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you want to eat, but there are harder things in life, you know? There are much harder things in life. So what we're doing is really quite indulgent. We're quite lucky. As a, as a, as a group of people, we're ridiculously fortunate. If you're going to succeed, then you will never, ever be able to do it on your own. A genuine success is something that's shared and that is brought to life by a group of people. Like you say, on that journey of success, you're gonna come across a load of people who will help you. But if you try and succeed on your own, then you're guaranteed to fail. Nothing works in isolation, in other words. No one succeeds in isolation. So that's what I, over the years, come to conclude. If you really wanna succeed, then you, you build your success around you with people who are gonna support you, and you help them succeed as well. That's the conclusion I came to. You've been filming on my wrong side all this time. <laughs> That's... Can we do it again? I don't know. What am I supposed to say? Tell me what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so I've asked the wrong question. <laughs>